today, we want to thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. His power, Amen. his hope, his love, yes. his joy that he's given me all throughout the years. But the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he has just seeded in me Amen. and allowed me to be able to share with others. Amen. I also want to thank my spiritual father, Pastor Dyer. Amen. Amen. He deserves that clap. Yes. He deserves that praise because he's just been on the battlefield for a long time. Amen. Yes. And where others faded away and fell away, he stayed. Yes. And we thank you for that. Amen. We thank you for the training and the teaching. Mm -hmm. And my friend, mm -hmm. talk about First Lady Dyer. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. I, 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 I look at her. Stretching me when I don't feel like I'm on, stretch. Come on. Um, but it keeps me on my knees. Mm -hmm. And not just for the stretch, but for some other stuff that's just between me and her. Mm -hmm. She keeps me praying. Yeah. But thank you. I love you for it. Amen. Um, to all of my family, my sister, my sister in law, my nieces, my friends, from, from babies, from childhood, from my church family, to all of you, my extended family. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for supporting St. Mary first. It ain't about me. It's about the Lord and us coming together. Amen. And I thank you all for being here and representing that to my Deaconess Board. Thank y'all for your love and your kindness and for always pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, and to my Ephesians 5 man. All right. If you know something about that, come on. You know something about that. <laughs> you don't know nothing about that. We can talk later. Right. <laughs> but thank God for my Ephesians 5, man. Because he loves me the way Christ instructed him to. Amen. And I'm so blessed and honored to have that. And I felt like after he spoke, we could have just passed the pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was over. Um, because he's Ephesians 5, that means we got some things to do, so we need to hurry up, okay? But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Patrick, for your hard work, your dedication, and your love that you give me, not just in public, but in private. Amen. Because you're all that in some of these 30 years don't seem like 30, they seem like 5. Because, like he said, the honeymoon is still and I thank you for that. I thank you for showing, for showing me the world, for things I couldn't have seen if I would have just stayed to myself. Mm -hmm. So God bless you and keep you. Keep doing what you're doing, but I'm going to keep a keep good eye on you to make sure. <laughs> um, let us pray. Let us pray because we don't want to prolong the time. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you so much you, for your love, your power. I thank you, Lord God, for just choosing me when I don't choose myself. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for just loving on me. Yes. And for every opportunity that you give me to walk with you. Thank you, God. And to talk with you. Yes. And you're always reminding me that I belong to you. Yes. Because even when the reports don't come back right, and even, Lord God, when the sayings may not be what they ought to be, mm -hmm. I know I can trust in what you say. Yes. Father God, I just thank you for the power of your word. Yes. 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 I thank you, Lord Jesus, for leaving us that love letter yes. so that we may have a place of refuge. Yes. Yes. We may have a place of peace. Yes. We may have a place of understanding, of yes. wisdom, of knowledge. Yes. Father God, help us to always want it. Yes. Help our want, oh Lord God. Yes. Help us to desire you and just want more and more of you. Yes. You didn't save us, Lord God, to starve. Yes. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Help us, Lord Jesus, to see who you are in us. Yes. Build us up, Lord God, so that we may know our purpose. Yes. We may know our power within you, Lord. You say we were too great for things. Help us, Lord Jesus, to walk with you and talk with you and know, Lord Jesus, that our words, Lord God, can move mountains as we heard. We know the mountains will fall, but, Lord Jesus, we can speak those things that are not as though they were. But if we don't know you, Lord God, put your power, we won't know what we can do, Lord God, through your power. So help us, Lord Jesus, to get to know you, Lord. 
I just thank you for the opportunity. And I will ask you, Lord Jesus, to hide me, Lord God, in your tabernacle. Yes, Lord God. So that you may be seen before your people. Yes, God. That the word, Lord God, may be received with fullness, Lord God, and yes. with wholeness, Lord Jesus. Father, we ain't always had God right, Lord. I know I haven't always been good, Lord Jesus. I know somebody else probably deserves to be here. But Lord God, whatever you're doing, Lord Jesus, do what you do, Lord God. Do it like you've never done it before, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the foundation that I stand on. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to just keep me rooted and grounded so that I may be able to stand and stand anyhow, Lord Jesus. Be with your people. Teach us, Lord God. Help your word to fall on good ground, Lord. So that when we leave this place today, we will be changed, Lord God. We may be different than we've ever been before. Lord, I just thank you. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I just thank you, Lord. And I don't normally do this, but I hear you, Jesus. Yes. And if we're going to, Lord God, be faithful yes. and not be fearful, yes. we would be obedient to your word. And we know that yes. in your obedience, Lord God, there's everything that we need. Yes. Whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Whatever you're praying, don't pray it without me. Don't pray it without me. Thank you, Lord. 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 Do your perfect work, Father. Our scripture reading today is coming from 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3. Such few verses, but what with mighty word and mighty spirit. Our theme today says, strip off some things and crave the word of God. Yes. But for a sub-theme I want to use, it's time for us to grow up. Okay. Yeah. It's time for us to grow up in our salvation. It's time for us to start doing what God has saved us to do. Yeah. Our scripture reading, first one. Wherefore, lay aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and all envies and all evil speaking. Come on, somebody. Amen. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Verse three, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. It's time for us to grow up, saints. Amen. It's time for us to do a new thing, yeah. a mighty thing, yeah. and let God do his perfect work yeah. in us. Yeah. This was a hard word for me, and when I got it, I was like, oh my gosh, me, uh, I don't know about this thing, but I'm so glad that he did, because he had to deal with me first. Right, yeah. right, right. He had to deal with me where I'm reading the scriptures saying, malice, mm. hypocrisy, God, yeah. no, Lord, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because his word cuts mm -hmm. and it proves. Right. Yes. So it starts with us. Oh, yes. But as long as we are in denial, All right. it's not going to work. Oh, no. yes. Yes. As long as we stay stunted in our growth and satisfied in the places that we are, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. We have to be obedient to his word. So it's a hard message. But sometimes we need to be shaken up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to be told like it is, mm -hmm. not watered down, not candy oh, no. All right. But we need to speak the word the way God give it to us. Right. Because so many times we see indifferences in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we see such lukewarmness in ourselves mm -hmm. and in the body of Christ. Yes. But if you know anything about the word, God said in the book of Revelation that, I would spew lukewarmness out of my mouth. Right. He said, I'd rather you be cold or hot. Come on, somebody. Right. We got some Bible readers right. here. Right. 
So we got to do what God wants us to do. Amen. It's time out for playing. Yes. Yes. It's time out for being scared. Right. It's time out. We have to be willing to do the work of God. Because again, in our obedience right. is all we need. Amen. Yes. God has promised us that. And Peter here, he's talking to the saved. All right. He's talking to born again believers. Right. He's talking to those of us who our testimony has told us Amen. that if you believe with your, 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 your heart and speak it through your mouth, you are saved. We're talking to those of us who say, I'm a born again Christian. I'm going to heaven anyhow. Right. <laughs> us, y'all, us. Right? But so many times we let so much get in our way. Amen. The, the TV show on, I can't go to Bible study, my show. Uh, my show. My show. That's my show. Okay. I got to do this. I got to do that. My, my kids need to do this. My, my dad, my dad in the third, I'm tired. I can't read. I done can't do that. I don't understand it. We got to stop with the excuses. Amen. Amen. And we have to start getting to know God for yes. who he really is. Yes. He's blessed us so, but I think we've come spoiled All right. to the fact that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to do what he asked us to do. Right? So we have to get it right, church. We have to grow up. Amen. And Peter is asking us to look, to do it like newborn babes. Mm -hmm. Long and yearn and cry and beg for what we need to nourish us in the word. He's asking us to get committed to that. To want it more and more and over and over like a mother's milk. How many babies do we know we can reason with? They're not taking that for an answer. So why do we let God take our excuses for an answer? Amen. It's a hard word today, y'all. I know it's Saturday, and I'm sorry, but it's what God gave to me. Amen. Amen. It's what we so Peter is urging us to be passionate for Jesus. Yes. If he saved us to do a work, have passion for the work yes. that he gave us. And he, we need to long for that pureness Lord. of his word. Yes. His word is pure. Yes. His word is true. Yes. And his word is what we're going to need to grow. Oh, amen. That's right. That's right. See, we always think that the church is an organization. We try to treat the church sometimes oh, like it's a business. Oh. And it is to a certain extent. Yes. But the church is a living organism. Yes. Yes. The church is a body of believers that are alive in Christ. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. He pulled us out of the world. Yeah, we live here on earth, but he pulled us out of the world so that we can do a work. So we have to get busy about doing his work. God said to go. How many of us are going? Come on. Yes. He said to go ye therefore, yes. teach all nations, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Are we on our job? Come on now. Yes. We all are ministers yes. if we are claiming that we are born again believers. Yes. But Peter said we got to lay aside some stuff. That's it. We got to get rid of some stuff. Yes. We got to take some stuff off. And starting today, I challenge each of you. Because the way this word dealt with me, mm. I hope it deals with you the same way. Yeah. But because I have to do it in front of you, you can do it in private. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and let it do its perfect work in you. So that you may learn what his will is for you and how it is to be done. Because born again believers are not supposed to be ignorant of God's word. Come on. Yeah. Come on. We're not supposed to be ignorant of God's word. Okay? We're supposed to be studying his word so that we may know who he is. First Lady Di always tell us and always remind us on a weekly basis, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. That's right. We got to study. Church, it's time to study yes. to show yourselves approved. That's right. Unto God, not man. Right. Unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly right. dividing the word of truth. We can't tell people what we think. Okay. That's right. We have to tell them what we know through the word. Yes. Because we've tasted. Right. right? Because we're born again believers. We've tasted it. Lord. 
So it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to move because there's power in his word. And there's power that will help us to do exactly what it is he would have us to do. Some of us been saved for 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years. But don't know God's word. There's no substance. And it's time out for that. Yeah. We can quote some good verses that we learned in Sunday school. Some of y'all remember, ain't Janie? Janie Good and used to step our hands with those rulers. Yeah, we used to get it because we weren't the angels that Patrick was talking about. Yeah, we know the, uh, Psalms 23. Yeah, yeah. Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, we know in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, we know John three sixteen. But do you know what it means? Come on, come on, somebody. Do you live it? Right, right. Is it a part of your repertoire? That's right. What are you doing with it? Doing? Are you able to stand up against persecution? Because that's what Peter is wanting us to grow up for. Or are you the persecutor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you holding Christians back from growing in their word? But you say you're a Christian too. Come on now, it's a hard word today, but y'all got to work with me because Amen. this is what God gave me. Amen. We live in a time now where everything is okay. Amen. You can live with this one, you can Come marry on. that one. Come on. You don't have to marry at all. Come you can do what you want, you can eat what you want, you can go where you want, you can do what you want. But we got to get back to what the word, word. says Come on. for us to do. And that is to create other disciples. Yes. Teach and preach yes. and, and go yes. about and do God's yes. business. Yes. So in our text, Peter transitions and he says, hey, mm. I'm talking to you born again believers. <laughs> I'm talking to you who say that you are saved. Uh -huh. What are you doing with God's word? Well, Where are you going with, where are you taking God's word? And he talking again to Christians, but we allow Satan to kind of diffuse that and to get us astray. Mm -hmm. But we have to continue to grow in our salvation. Mm -hmm. We have a living hope living on yes. the inside of yes. us. So we again have to take some stuff off, some mm -hmm. bad behaviors that hold our growth back mm -hmm. and hurt back the growth of mm -hmm. others. We have to become spiritually developed. Mm -hmm. So I'm challenging all of us again to do that today, today because admitting that things are not right in your life is hard. Amen. It's like you in my face, you say, what? How are you telling me? I am because God told me right. to tell you <laughs> that it's time to raise the bar. It's time to lift it up. It's time out for all the foolishness and what's to get about, the, uh, to get about God's business. Yes. I just thank the God for his word. Yes. So for those of you who like points, we're going to get to some points. Because I know we got some, some, some of y'all that just like to have points and want to know where you're going and what you're talking about. So we're going to get you some points. But before we get you the points, we need to understand that there are some things that we cannot no longer be in denial about. Amen. Really check yourself. Yeah. However long you've been saved, ask yourself, how old am I spiritually? Come on now. There it is. Wow. If I've been saved for 50 years, am I two? <laughs> am I five? <laughs> Come on now. Be honest with yourself right. because that's all Satan wants you to do is to stay stunted right. and underdeveloped. Amen. Amen. It's time for us to grow up, saints. It's time for us to get it in our hearts that God has a work for us to do. Amen. So Peter is beseeching us to put old behaviors in check. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to lay aside those things that hinder us from treating other people right, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. Yes. And truly loving one another, right. not thinking until we make it, right. but loving one another the way Christ tells us to love. Right. So our first point is to put that down. It may ruin your appetite. <laughs> Put, it down. Put it down. It's gonna ruin your appetite. I don't know about y'all, but in the house I grew up in, you couldn't eat dessert before you ate. Right. Amen. I don't know about y'all, so some of y'all know about that, right? You couldn't eat the cookies and the cake and the ice cream and the popsicles and the dolly pops and all that before dinner. How come? Tell me why. Somebody tell me. Ruin your appetite. Ruin your appetite. 
That's right. That's right. And I know in this verse, sometimes most times we hear it preached from a taking off of dirty clothes. Mm -hmm. But see, all of us in our salvation know that we need to bathe. All right. And that when we bathe, we need to put on clean clothes. Uh -huh. But all of us in our salvation don't know that when it's time to stop eating, mm -hmm. to stop eating. Right. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. So we're going to look at this thing from an eating perspective. Mm -hmm. We're gonna look at it from that 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 perspective. We just Patrick and I mentioned we just went on a cruise, mm -hmm. and I've been to having some health issues that have made me to have to change my diet so that I can get it right. To either do this or take the medicine, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so before the cruise, I said mm -hmm. I'm gonna do right. I ain't gonna eat this. I ain't gonna eat that. I'm, the first day on the cruise, <laughs> went out on the deck. They giving out uh, ice cream. I'm gonna just get a little one. <laughs> just looking sideways. Dr. said, I'm just going to get a little one. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got a little one. <laughs> then at dinner time, I ain't going to get no dessert. I'm going to just eat my little food and not get no bread. Ooh, that roll look good. I'm going to just take the top off of it. <laughs> <laughs> then all the food, they, and then here come the, 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 the menu with the dessert. I'm going to just taste it. Ate the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was terrible. But anywho, I digress. <laughs> so many times when your water grow up, you just you just gotta you just gotta know that junk food is no longer good for you. Right. And the junk food of the spiritual junk food too that we sometimes title it is no good for us either. And that's what Peter is trying to tell us about. That's He's right. trying to tell us that there's some stuff that you just can't eat. That right. you just can't make a part of your, your walk with Christ, that you just can't make a part of your life. But it's the written word of God that is going to nourish us. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that Peter told us that will ruin our appetites is all malice. All malice. All Some malice. of us forget that three little that yeah. three letter word, the all. 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 And we say, well, some malice. But are he talking about all malice? All. And these things that we talk about, don't get it twisted. Because God, then, just because we're talking about five of these things, <laughs> He means all sin. Oh, he means all sin. Oh, but just because we're talking about five, don't realize that just because I don't have hypocrisy or envy, I can do adultery and fornication. Come on now. No, that's not what he means. All sin. All but the first thing we want to talk about is that we are to lay aside malice, which generally speaks of wickedness of all kinds of evil. Mm. Wickedness has to do with how people live and how they, for those people that do not know Jesus. That's the things that they do. Mm. So why do you think Peter is telling us to pull out the lay aside malice? Come on now. Because we're still trying to hold on to the formal lusts mm -hmm. that we had after we became saved. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to hold on to the baggage, right? Mm -hmm. But Peter said, take that off. Take that, off. Mm -hmm. you, that don't belong on you anymore. Stop preferring to live like the world. All right. Mm -hmm. And stop accepting and buying what the world is selling. Amen. We are set aside to be different. Yes. We are called to a higher standard. Amen. God calls us not to be conformed to this world, uh -huh. to be transformed yes. by the renewing yes. of our minds. Yes. So are you living like the world? All right. I beseech you to stop. Come on. And I'm not talking about just on Sunday. I'm talking about Monday through Saturday. Yes. Do you live pretty much like unbelievers holding grudges? She got me one time to bam band camp. I ain't dealing with her no more. <laughs> That's the stuff we're talking about. Carrying bitterness in your heart for others. Having no good feeling towards others whatsoever. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Is it a difference between you and an unbeliever? Mm -hmm. Make sure that there is. Right. Check yourself. Right. Amen. 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 We are to live different because we have been called to live different. Right. So we are to put off malice. We are to believe what the Bible says about sin Amen. and take it seriously. Amen. Okay? We are to live and seek and honor Jesus above all else. We are to turn away from the world's system and be fed by the gift of the Holy Word and have a devotion and a commitment to it. 1 Corinthians 5 and 8 says, Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Saints, it's time to grow up. Amen. Then Paul Peter said, Take off all deceit. Oh, all deceit. Not some of it, all of it. 
Deceit speaks about setting a bait or a trap for someone. It suggests the idea of trying to take advantage of someone through trickery. Mm -hmm. Some of us know that as being played. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been played? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard. Somebody know about being played. Mm -hmm. It's when you've been manipulated, uh -huh. or someone you, you you start using power plays and fat flattery and guilt trips on other people so that they can go your way. Come on now. <laughs> and they're so smooth with it. You vote for this one. You do that. You accept her, not her. You you, you just get everybody in your court instead of loving all people like right, God. Right, right. We need to stop that kind of behavior. We don't need to be players. All right. We need to be on the on the job for God. Amen. God's word can't do its perfect work in us if we're around here playing people. Mm -hmm. If we're around here manipulating people, we can't do that. Proverbs say, a false witness shall not be unpunished. Mm -hmm. And he that speaketh lies shall perish. Mm -hmm. My Lord, my Lord. Ooh. Don't eat the seed. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Lord. Don't eat the seed. Mm -hmm. Because not only will it ruin your appetite, it could kill you. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisy, he says, you need to take it all, lay it aside, get rid of it. And hypocrisy speaks of a different kind of deceit. Deceit. It is one we love ourselves so much that we try to fool people into thinking we're something that we're not. All right, now. You know that holier than thou, but if you gossiping, yeah, those people. We call that. Two-faced. Right. I think we all know something about being two-faced, right? Amen. That word is talking about in the back in the day, a play actor. And then during COVID, we all had our masks oh, on, so we didn't know who was who. Was who. Amen. But uh God knew. Amen. But God knew. Yes. Amen. Okay. Pretending to have a holiness in front of other people that you do not have is not profiting you and nobody else a thing. Amen. And creating an outward of impression that is only for show, the show is over. Amen. It's doing you no good. <laughs> Being a Christian in the community, but then getting with your girls and gossiping and talking, that ain't doing you no Come good on. either. Being a hypocrite, sitting in the church, singing the songs, singing the hymns, but have no substance, mm. time out for that too. All right. The word of God deals with us as we really are and seeks genuinely to change us into what God wants us to be. Mm. But hear me and hear me good. God knows you cannot fool him. He knows the real you. But his word says, and he wouldn't have said it if he didn't, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Born again believers are to be command, are commanded to take off the mask, to take off hypocrisy, to let it go. Not only will it ruin your appetite for the word of God, but it'll help you breathe. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Yes, man. Amen. Yes, All envies. I didn't say envy singular. I said envy plural. Envies. envies. The word envy speaks of a burning sense of jealousy against someone. Envy is wanting what someone, has, uh, someone else has. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be like that as born again believers. Amen. We should want what God wants for us and be happy for what God wants for someone else. Amen. Jealousy will make you maliciously take it from somebody. Mm -hmm. So envy will make you want what somebody has. Jealousy will make you just take it. Okay, we the, the born again believers don't do that. Amen. We know that in our day is being a hater. Come on, that's it. Come on, somebody knows something about being a hater. It's being self-centered and self-focused. Then we are going to be. Then you're going to get envious and jealous of someone who gets what we want, causing discontent and resentment. Born again believers, we got to take that off. It also makes you unable to be thankful for the good that others right, have. Right. Mm -hmm. Listen to what James wrote in, in chapter 3. If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Mm -hmm. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. 
And don't get it mistaken, even when you wish that somebody don't get what they ought to be getting to, that's also envy. So stop it already. All right. Some things we may envy others over may be jobs. She got that promotion knowing I was next in line. Why she got it and I didn't get it. Popular. She got all the friends and I have nobody. The house, the car, the looks, the clothes, the social status. She travels all the time and I don't. Be happy for them that Amen. God has made a way Amen. for them to do some of the things that he's blessed them to do. Yes. Check your spiritual junk drawer. It might be too full. It may be depleted. God's word cannot have its desired impact on us if we're self-centered, covered in envy, and jealous and a jealousy about it in our hearts. All those things, malice and the deceit and the hypocrisy and envious that spring from it can be hidden deep inside of us. But truly know that they can only be there for a little while. That snake is going to rear its head sooner or later. And it's going to start by coming out through our mouth, which we usually say, don't hate the player. Y'all already know. Amen. And you already know. Like Minister Ham preached a few months ago, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself, saints. Envy is green. Yeah, I know. Good vegetables are green. They tell us to eat our green vegetables. But don't get fooled by envy. It's not good for you. Put that aside. Lay it aside. It'll ruin your appetite. And it'll keep you undeveloped from studying and learning God's word. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Peter says, all evil speaking. Evil speaking. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> all of us can raise our hand and say guilty as charged. <laughs> Come on now. What did we say back in the day? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but what? Stop it already. Stop it already. Somebody know about that. Just because you called me a car, that makes me a car, huh? Come on. Just because I'm standing in the garage, is that why? No. That is not why. But let me twist it for you. It's something about church hurt. Come on. That others out there in the world don't know nothing about. Church hurt is for real. It's real for real. It's something about when our brothers and our sisters call us mean and hateful names. It runs deep. And I don't know about you, but them sticks and them stones, they hurt. And they leave scars. Right. So we need to stop using that as an excuse that it's just words. Mm -hmm. We need to realize that our mouths can hurt others and stomp hurt mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. There was a theologian, John Casey, and he's now deceased. He said, we tend to condemn in others what we refuse to see in ourselves. Mm -hmm. So why then do we look at the speck in our brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in our own eye? This type of behavior can cause a fellow brother or sister in Christ to stumble and sometimes even fall. And just in case you forgot, Peter is talking to believers here. Right. That's right. He's talking about how we treat one another. Mm -hmm. Not only does it potentially cause some to stumble, but it hinders spiritual growth in ourselves and in others. So walk with me through the text here. Peter says that we are to lay aside all evil speaking all right. or all slander in case you want to get the words twisted. We talking semantics here. All the gossip, all the bite biting, all the bad mouthing of others, all the angry name calling, all the character assassinations, all the whisperings about others, even those that are so eloquently disguised in our prayers. All right now. Come on somebody. All right, sis. That's it. Stop it already. You're not that concerned. You just trying to put out people's business. Because it's time that we grow up in our salvation. Amen. Amen. Everyone believes gossip is wrong, but most everyone, and guilty as charged, enjoys participating in it. Mm. <laughs> Even if we're just listening, why become this juicy girl? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, nah, I ain't gonna tell you. Girl, tell me. Girl, tell me. We want the juicy. We sipping the tea as they say. All right. Uh, 
and somebody girl, we sick of the tea, and the tea gets the tea gets sweeter and sweeter. But Peter says that we're not supposed to be doing that. We're not supposed to be behaving that way. That's what we call elevating ourselves and lowering others. Come on. All of these practices of the old life, these are brothers and sisters in Christ. These are your brothers and sisters in Christ. Stop it already. Stop it, I say. We even if you have a someone who's not born again, don't hate on them. Don't play them. Love on them. But your true brothers and sisters in Christ, love on them the way Christ tells Amen. us to love. And not slander their names. Right. Not talk about them behind their backs. Yeah. James put it this way. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Did you hear me? Ooh, come on. Mm. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness. Yeah. Stop living like the world. Overflow of wickedness, allowing Satan to use you at his will and push you away from the word of God. And receive with meekness, that means humility, the implanted, the seed in us, the implanted word, which is able to save our souls and the souls of others. So cast it off. All that stuff that belongs in the old life, that doesn't belong in a born again believer's now. life. Sin always has its consequences, so be sure it will find you out. Yeah. Yeah. What you do in the dark, praise God for the saints who know the word. Amen. Because your sin will find you out. The Bible says if you're born again, you have tasted. Right so act like you have tasted that God is good and lay those things aside. Yes. They must go. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself it's time to grow up. Right. You heard me. I didn't say tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself. <laughs> tell yourself, yourself touch your it's time to grow up. Right. Is this word helping anybody? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Point number two. A hunger for spiritual growth. Mm. Verse 2 says, New born, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. hmm. 20, 30, 40, 50, and I'm two spiritually. Mm. He's telling us how to grow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here's another command. If you want to grow, not only you must lay aside all the sins that so easily beset you mm -hmm. and me, we are to crave. Do we understand what crave means? Mm -hmm. yeah. Desire, to long, to yearn, right. to not take no for an answer. Amen. Notice that Christians are being commanded about what to desire. Hmm. We wonder why. Well. We have been told what to crave because this appetite doesn't always come naturally. Come on now. But so far too many Christians have great memories of when I became a Christian. When I was born again, I was on fire. I had it burning in my belly. I had to be at Bible study, prayer service study. I had to do the work of the God of God. But then all of a sudden we saw ourselves getting lazy and not wanting to walk in the newness that God has set for us. Now these common questions, they're rhetorical and they're uh, uh, not for you to answer me. They're for you to answer it within yourself and talk to God about it because he already knows. If you are to be transparent and totally honest, can you say that tr you truly have a yearning in your heart for God? Don't answer me, answer within yourself. <clears throat> are you yearning to know him better, to grow closer to him? Answer it within yourself. This longing of the word of God is a passion for Jesus, a hunger and a thirst that you can't quench. That's the challenge for us today because there are so many things in our lives that cry out for our attention mm -hmm. and take our energy, thank you so much, mm -hmm. take our energy and our passions away from growing in our salvation. The one who truly is born again, Peter says, will long for the presence of the Lord. Oh. He or she will long for his word and make every attempt to get to know God better through the pages of his word. Mm -hmm. 
again, it's time for us to grow up. Amen. Yes, yes. We make time for everything else. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hair done, nails done. Yeah. Go get new suits, new clothes. Mm -hmm. Go to the games. Mm -hmm. We need to do some of these things. I get it. Yeah. I get it. And someone without children, I get it. You all have responsibilities I don't have. Mm -hmm. But I have some responsibilities that you don't have. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they're not to be excuses for us not to study and to learn God's word. Amen. 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 That's our challenge. Amen. Because there are just so many things in our lives that want to distract us. Amen. Set those aside. Move those away so that we may get our energy and our passion back for doing the yes. word of God. Yes. The one who is truly born again, Peter says, will long and cry and beg. Well, Make every attempt there is to get to know God better in his word. I wasn't always there, you all. I wasn't. I was doing the same thing. But one day, God just really put it in my spirit that I need more of you. More. Amen. I have to do something different. Yes. I need you studying my word. Amen. So I even have to be careful now because even coming to church on Sunday, I have to be careful with the song service. I want it to end because I'm ready for the word. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready to hear what God has to say yes. that's going to help me along the walk. But I don't want to still miss the blessing in the song. Right. So I have to settle myself down and be like, okay, Cass, pull it together. Focus. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> and then some of us want to chick pick and choose who we want to hear preach. Uh -huh. The word is the word is the word. The word, word. Right. 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 Whether you're horse fan or whether you're fan like a baby, eat right. and hunger for God's word. It's time for us to, to put all that stuff aside and take time with God. He wants our time. He wants us to mature. He wants us to grow up. So Peter is urging us to see ourselves in relation of the word of God as newborn babies would in relation to his mother's milk. We need God's word desperately. We cannot grow or mature without it. On our own, we can't understand what God needs us to understand. That's right. That's right. On our own and in our own strength, we have not the power to live the life God wants us to live. Yes. In our desperate need for nourishment of our soul, we need to eat and drink the things yes. of God, yes. not those yes. things that hinder us. Amen. That's why it's vital that we intensely desire the sincere milk of the word. We are to crave it as much as we are hungry as a newborn babe craves for his mother's milk. The only one... The, uh, the one who is truly born again, Peter says that we are to crave and long and desire for the word. That's right. So we have to grow and not just every now and again, but we should be growing daily, daily. in the Lord. It is not God's plan for us to remain at the same level of infancy as we were when we accepted Christ right. as Lord and Savior. That's right. Right. Yeah. We're not to stay tuned. We are to grow up. And before you get it twisted, you're never going to get grown. Grown. Okay? You're not going to get grown, but you still need to grow up. Okay? Don't stay at that same level, but grow and mature. He wants us to increase our walk and, and to walk as his son, Jesus Christ, walked. And to think in, in like he thought and to speak as Jesus spoke. Stop saying, what would Jesus do? Read the word and find out <laughs> what he would do. He wants us to grow to a perfect man, to, a, to the measure of stature, of the fullness of Christ. He wants us to put on Christ. And in order for us to mature into the image of God's son, our souls need nourishment that God the Father himself has provided for us. And that nourishment comes from the written word of God. I know it's a hard word, and, and I'm not even sorry about it anymore. Come on now. So do you want to gain stronger faith? You need to be nourished by, the God, by God's word. Romans says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stop spectating. Hear. Do you want to live a more holy life? Then you need to be nourished by the word of God. Psalm says, how can a young man clean his way? By taking heed of the word. Do you want to be wise in spiritual matters? Then you need to be nourished by the word. Mm. Timothy says, and that from a child, mm. thou hast known the scriptures, 
which are able to make you wise until salvation through yes. faith, which is in who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. Growth takes work. Yes. You have to want it, and it can be yours. Yes. The provisions have been made. In fact, you have everything you need in the scriptures. Come on. Paul wrote, all scripture is given for inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, whole, truly equipped Come on now. Come for on. every word. Yes. So when somebody asks you to do something, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. You've been <laughs> equipped because you have <laughs> Jesus <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> pray in front of people. Well, what you doing when you're by yourself? All right. Amen. It's not about the people or the faces. Come on. Being a Christian is not being dependent upon, nor is it summed up simply by sitting in the pews and looking at the preacher on Sunday. It's craving the word of God and wanting to know God for yourself and getting excited about what God can do. Give God a hand clap. Point three, and we almost there. <laughs> Stop starving yourself in ease. Mm -hmm. I know none of us look like we've been starving. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. But we're not eating the word. All right. And that's what Papa Peter is trying to tell us to do. That's Verse right. three says, if so ye, be, ye have tasted mm -hmm. that the Lord is gracious. Mm -hmm. Yes. If someone has truly believed on Jesus and if they have truly been given the gracious gift of new life, if they truly are God's child, newborn or seasoned, then they will want more of God's word. If someone has truly tasted the Lord and know he is good, they want more of that goodness. But if that ain't the child, the thing about a newborn's baby capacity for nourishment is this. If they have craved and cried, yeah. and cried and craved, mm -hmm. and craved and cried, mm -hmm. and their mom has came and answered that with a nice warm bottle, mm -hmm. and with every swallow, that milk gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> and for our meat eaters, it gets better and better, stronger and stronger. I know it's not the right way word to use but it just gets good to our souls. God is wanting to do that same thing for us. He want us craving. He want us to mature. But here's the shout. Thank you, Jesus. When a born believe, again believer has been, as in Deacon Green said, washed. <laughs> well, we've been washed in the blood of Jesus. And has been laid, and we've laid aside malice, and we've taken off deceit, and we've put off hypocrisy, and we've thrown away envy, and we've and, and, and gotten rid of evil speaking, and buried all of that sin that so easily beset us. And allowed the blood of Jesus to cleanse us of yes. all that dirt. Yes. And guess what? He'll even cleanse the residue. Yes. He leaves nothing, nothing for a chance. Then, my sisters and brothers, will we experience the sweet taste of the Lord's goodness yes. and his many promises. Yes. And that ain't all, y'all. <laughs> he will feed you. He will nourish you and teach you to overcome temptation, yes. to teach you to overcome these things. He will teach you how to overcome persecution, yes. how to overcome church hurt, yes. and teach you how to praise and worship him in truth and in spirit. Yes. He'll teach you how to walk right yes. and talk right. Yes. And before yes. you know it, you will be craving and longing and yearning for more of God's yes. grace and his hope. Y'all, the table is spread. Uh -huh. It's already been laid. Yes. It has everything on it you needed. Yes. Why don't you come and see what tastes so good yes. to the rest of us who have tasted it? Yes. But you have to want it. Yes. To want it. Yes. He's bread when you're hungry. Yes. He's water when you're thirsty. Yes. If you need a witness, Glory. look at his word. Glory. He will help you do it and be a witness. Yes. Can't nobody do it like Jesus. But you got to know about Jesus in order to do it like Jesus. So that's why we raise our hands. That's 
why we stomp our feet. Uh -huh. That's why we say amen and hallelujah yes. when we hear the word of God preach. Yes. Because it tastes good. Yes. And it don't just taste good, it is good. Yes. Do somebody know it like I know it? Yes. So I hope you're getting excited about the word. That's why Christians ought to be noisy. We are not to be quiet. Yes. We are to talk about the Lord. We ought to raise our hand. We ought to not tell about who's looking, right. who's listening. Right. We ought to let the word do the word. Yes. But if you don't know the word, Something's wrong with that. 
We can't depend on this every Sunday. We got to get it for ourselves, saints. We got to do it, God, what he would have us to do. It's time out. I love y'all, and I thank you all for being here today. So let's just give God one more hand clap of praise. before I don't have no more voice. <laughs> Father God, and y'all stand. Let us, let us give God some stand-up time. We've been sitting a long time. And we're just going to pray. Because we don't want this word to leave here and not be thought about anymore. We want to leave here changed. We didn't just come here to eat and fill our bellies. We came here to get food for our spirit. We want spiritual growth. And if you can't desire it for yourself, I'm going to pray that somebody else can, or we all who do desire can desire it. But look, God needs you to do what you need to do. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you so much for this opportunity again. I thank you, Lord God, for your word that was given unto us today, Father. I thank you first that you gave it to me the way you did, Lord God, that it caused me to look at myself and check me. It had me pull open that raw spiritual junk and clean it out, Lord God, because I knew I couldn't come before your people to be the hypocrite that you was talking about in your word. I knew I couldn't be the person doing the evil speaking in your word. I knew I couldn't be the one with gal and with all those things in my heart weighing me down, Lord Jesus, but before coming to your people, I had to get it out of the way. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your pruning. I thank you, Father God, for the cutting of your word, for the breaking down and for the build up, Lord God. I even thank you for the spiritual growth. I thank you for your commitment to us because you still do every day what you said you're going to do, even when we don't do what we say we're going to do. But Lord God, we come before you with pureness of heart. We come before you, Lord, wanting to long and crave and yearn for your word. Help us, Lord God, to get rid of the excuses. And remind us that when we do have excuses, remind us that it is an excuse. And help us realize, Lord Jesus, that we need to stop starving and start eating. Help us to stop saying things that would tickle ears. That would make people think that they're living okay and they're not. But help us, Lord God, to take the unadulterated truth of your word and preach it and teach it the way you would have it done. We're not watering it down. We're not candy coating it. But we, Lord God, is giving it like you, Lord God, would have us to give it. Help us to yearn and to long for you, Father. Father God, if we walked in here doing those things, being a gossip and a fight fighter and a backstabber and a player and a hater, help us to walk out of here to never do that again. Because everything we need is in you. All of our gifts and our talents can be used. My gift might be not be her gift, and his gift might not be his gift, but Lord God, we all have gifts. When you saved us, you gave us a measure. Help us to utilize that measure well, Father God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to walk in your promises, to walk in your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us if we have sinned, Father. Forgive us, Lord God, that we don't walk those plates. Help us to see what's in our eyes first. Help us to clean up around our front doors. Help us to not bring down the saints. Help us to not use bad, mean words against our sisters and our brothers. But to truly love on one another the way you say love. And that is with a copy love. Father, yes, some of us are smarter than others in men's eyes. But in your eyes, Lord, we're all scholars if we get in your word and learn your word. But it doesn't matter because we have you in our hearts and in our minds teaching us and giving us what we need, Lord God. But help us to be obedient to share. Help us to be able to share the word, not to shy away from witnesses, not to shy away from telling people the truth of the matter. It's not what we say, it's what your word. I tell them, Lord God, I believe what the word say. If the word say don't do it, don't do it. If the word say do it, do it. Yes. So don't be asking questions that you already know the answers yes. to. Don't ask what Jesus is going to do. Look in the word and find out what he did. Yes. And he said that you would be able to do greater things. Yes. So help us, Lord God, to do greater things than you. Yes. Lord, we know we ain't always got it right. Yes. 
But as of today, Lord God, we've been challenged to get it right. Father, although some of us may have been on this battlefield a long time, but if our growth has been stunted, Jesus, help us to grow. Help us to now desire you. Help us, Lord God, to ask you for wisdom if we don't understand. Help us to ask you for knowledge if we need more. Help us to go to the right individuals, Lord God, that we may grow in you. I thank you, Lord God. I wave my hands in holy mercy. I pray your anointing over every soul and every other person that caught it, thought it not robbery to get out their beds and come here today. Yes. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing, Lord Jesus. Yes. All those that even couldn't be here today. Thank you. Lord, we lift up Reverend Tigo and Sister Tigo. We know yes. they couldn't be here, but yes. Lord Jesus, we know that they're praying and we know that they have the heart of this church and all the saints and best interest, Lord. Continue to bless every church that is represented, every pastor that's represented, and help us to walk in our calling so that they don't have to be bogged down with foolishness. Keep us in your grace and mercy. Give us travel and grace as we go back to the places that we all need to return to, Father. Help us, Lord God, to grow up and do it right in you. With these and all blessings in God's mighty name, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I really do truly pray and hope that some word was said that will help you all. I know it has blessed me in my studies and blessed me in my time with God. And we all got a work to do. We all can do better. So do better. Don't leave here today the same. Leave here today, change, and go and spend time with God every day. Yes. And let us start growing in the world. Yes. Not what we heard. We're going to start saying what we know. Amen. Because we got it from the world. Amen. 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 God, you all pray my strength in the Lord. And I thank you once again. Amen. God bless you. Amen.